How did I not know about these? Hello everyone, so maybe I am super late to the party or maybe I'm super early, but I had no idea that Posca, the maker of the very famous and very hyped paint markers, also made color pencils. I received a newsletter from an art supply store where I used to shop saying that they had a discount on Posca product, including their color pencils and also pastel crayons. And since this is somehow completely new to me, of course I had to buy them. And as I said, there is also pastel crayons, but I only got the color pencils for now because let me tell you, these guys were not cheap. Even with a discount, this set of 36 color pencils costed more than a set of 36 Faber-Castell Polychromo color pencils, which are high quality color pencils. So I'm assuming with a price like that, that these color pencils should be pretty dang good. I checked if I could maybe get them a little cheaper from Amazon, but at this moment when I'm recording this video, I couldn't find them on any of the Amazons that I searched on. So I'm wondering if I can't find them on Amazon, how come I can find them in Swedish art supply stores? Because it is usually the other way around. But I did actually find something that is called Uni color pencils and Uni is the brand making the Posca product and also other art supplies like the Unipin fineliners and gel pens and stuff like that but I'm pretty sure that the Uni color pencils and the Posca color pencils are not really the same so if any of you guys have any information about these please let me know I'm curious and also if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and also click that little bell icon to get notified every time I post new videos thank you so these Posca pencils are apparently oil-based. I do also believe that the Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil-based and the Prisma Premier color pencils are wax-based. So they apparently gives us a soft and smooth writing experience, bright colors, easy color blending, delivers an oil paint effect by blending the drawing lines with an oil medium, and they are light resistance, which is great. And here we have all the different color names. I did also read that just like Posca paint markers, you can draw with these color pencils on almost any surface like plastic, metal, glass, stone, whatever, so I am definitely gonna try that. So let's release them from the plastic prison. Guys, this is what I call a delicious art supplies. Just look at all these vibrant colors. The packaging is just so gorgeous. I first thought it was a tin case, but it feels like plastic. I think for the amount of money we are supposed to spend on these, we could at least have gotten a tin case. It looks like they have just stacked the color pencil trays. They are just laying loose on top of each other. So I guess that is what this rubber band is for, to put it around the box to keep it shut. I wonder how long it will take before I lose this. So finally, let's check out the color pencils. There is a little bit of pigment dust on the pencils. Here we have the first layers the second layer, and the third layer. So this is what the pencils looks like with a nice matte finish and we can see the color on the end of the pencil. Oh, there it is. And that is what I was looking for. So I was looking at the pencils and I couldn't find any color name or number to tie them to these color names, but there is actually a little number on the top of the pencil. I think I would have preferred having the color name or the number on the side of the pencil. Maybe they were just going for a clean look. So yeah, I don't think there is that much more to say about the appearance. More than just looking at them, I can't really believe that these are color pencils for about $95. But oh well, let's swatch them. The very interesting white one. Wow, they look so vibrant. First impression, it feels very soft and smooth to draw with. I don't have to put much pressure on them at all to get them these pigmented.
Um, I think I missed one of the yellows, so oops. So here we have all the swatches, and as you can see, the paper is quite textured. So I also tried the pencils on regular super smooth copy paper, just so you can see the difference between the different papers. And yeah, they still look pretty pigmented. So I really want to put these pricey Posca pencils to the test, so I'm gonna do some comparisons with the Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Prismacolor Premier pencils. Both high quality pencils in roughly the same price range, which is under the Posca pencils. So let's see if Posca is worth the money. Both the Posca and the Ferber Castell ones are oil based, while the Prisma colors are wax based. But the Posca pencils feels much more like the Prisma one, since both has a very soft and smooth core. The Ferber Castell pencils has a much drier feel to them, which I do prefer to be honest, but still, as you can see, they are all equally pigmented. And a little smudge test, where you can see that they do smudge roughly the same, maybe the Prisma colors a little less. I also did a blending test, and the Posca pencils blends beautifully. In fact, they all blended quite nicely, but the Prisma and the Posca pencils worked the best when it came to layering lighter colors on top of darker, and I think the Posca ones actually did a little better in this case. Both Posca and Prisma has a thicker kind of formula, more like soft oil pastel crayon kind of, which I think allows the lighter pigments to go on top of the darker ones more easily. I also wanted to test the oil trick, where you get this oil painting effect by rubbing an oil medium on the color pencils. And for this I picked my very fancy, expensive face oil, but yeah, I could probably just have used regular cooking oil, but yeah, anyway. And this is actually a pretty cool effect, it is like you are dissolving the pencils and smudging it around like paint. It was a little harder to dissolve the Prisma colors, maybe because they are wax based perhaps. Then lastly, will the pencils write on glass? Yeah, kind of. Not super impressed though. But then on the other hand, the other pencils won't really write on glass at all. So yeah, good on you Posca pencils. So looking at all these tests, they are not identical, but also there isn't that much that separates them either. Besides the glass test that Posca won, so congratulations. Alright, so let's use these to draw something. So I drew a little fox, because when I have color pencils, I want to draw animals. And foxes are pretty colorful and autumny, so I thought it was fitting for this season. And it feels a little weird using colors again after doing a bunch of Inktober paintings. So yeah, this is a little bit of a cartoony, semi-realistic style, and I know that the eyes will look a little freaky for a bit, but ju just bear with me. The paper I'm using is specifically for working with pastels and color pencils and stuff like that, so it has a little bit of texture, but a very soft texture for the pigments to grab onto, which is great when you want to blend and layer pastels and color pencils. So I'm starting very lightly and then building up the layers and the color intensity. If you start lighter, you have more room to put more different colors in the same spot. If you go in too dark or too saturated too soon, you are filling up the texture or the grain of the paper and you can't really layer the colors that easily. I haven't worked with color pencils in quite a bit there, so I am a little rusty. I also now remember why I don't like using color pencils that often, because they are freaking time consuming, it takes ages to build up the colors and fill in larger areas. 
So firstly, these are not bad color pencils at all. They are soft and pigmented and fairly easy to use. I personally don't really like the super softness since it makes the nib more mushy and I find it hard to make more detailed work with them. It is the same feeling I get when working with Prismacolor pencils and that is why I prefer the Ferber Castell Polychromo color pencils since they are a little harder and to me easier to build up the colors with. And yes, obviously you can also layer the Posca pencils, but it has a thicker consistency which makes them feel like they are building on top of each other and when getting too much pigment in one area it feels like you are pushing the colors around on the paper. You can't really see it, but it is just a feeling when you're drawing with them. And since they are so soft, you have to sharpen them more often, but actually I didn't have any problem sharpening them, so no broken nibs. Yeah, that is more than what you can say about the Prismacolor pencils, they are just a disaster to sharpen. So yeah, as I said, the Posca color pencils are not bad at all. They are super pigmented, nice to work with, soft, blends nicely. But would I recommend you to get them if you could find them anywhere? And yeah, not really. They are so overpriced and there isn't really anything special to them. They don't even come with a tin case. And as the test showed, they are not really better than the Prismacolors or the Polychromos unless you want to draw on glass with them, but that wasn't really that impressing to be honest. If you like a softer and pigmented kind of color pencil, get the Prismacolors. Polychromos are also great, well worth the money, I can really recommend them. And I'm pretty sure that there are even cheaper alternatives out there with about the same qualities, Derwent and Caran Dash are also great brands, so yeah, there is a lot of options out there. So yeah, that's the Posca color pencils, pretty good but also pretty overpriced. I love how this little fox turned out though, super cute, and I like the cartoony style with the darker outlines. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it a little informative. And if there is any other art supplies out there that you would want me to try out, good or bad, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats! Bye!